Hi, my name is Siti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, I'm going to show you 15 Google Sheets functions everyone should know about. So let's dive into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. I'm going to leave a list of all 15 functions in that description below with timestamps. So by all means, use that to go back over some of the functions discussed. Now this is my personal top 15. Now do scroll down into the comment section and let me know what your favorite functions in Google Sheets are. Have I missed any that you are using on a daily basis? And if so, which ones? Please let us know and I will be making a follow-up video. Now let's go to the first one and that's sum. Now we all like to add different values together and sum is going to allow us to do that. Now in order for us to use sum it's very simple we're going to first press the equal symbol and that's what we're going to do with every single function in Google Sheets and this will bring up an autocomplete window. Now what we're looking for is sum sum and then you will select the first sum. Now what's great about Google Sheets is that it opens up a little dialog box that gives you more information about which functions and how to use these functions. Now sum is one of the easiest ones to use. You simply highlight all the values you'd like to see added together, you close your brackets and then you simply tap enter. This is going to add all your values together. Which brings us neatly to the number two function and that is sum if. This is going to do the same thing as sum but it's going to have a criteria. So it's going to check for a criteria and only add numbers together that fit that criteria. So let's go ahead and demonstrate this. Now, we're going to press equals, select sum if, and if you can't find it, simply start typing it and it'll pop up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our range. So these are the values we would like to see added together. And then we're going to add a comma. Now this comma allows us to go into the second part. And this is the criterion. This is what is going to be used to check if we're going to add it together or not. And what we can do now is we can add a range of different things. What I'm going to select is the greater than. So let's go ahead and open up our quotation marks. We're going to add greater than 10 and then close that. We can close the brackets and enter. Now only the values greater than 10 are going to be summed or added together. So this is sum if. This is great for when you've got results or test scores or you'd like to see some different groups added together. Now the third function in my top 15 list is a three-part function because there are three different functions and they all do a similar thing. Now what it does is it takes strings or text information and it's going to merge it together or bring it all together. So for example if we have a name and a sentence we can then put that name into the sentence. Now you can either use concatenate join or text join. Now let's start with concatenate. Now we're going to press equals and then concatenate. And what we're doing now is selecting the strings we'd like to see joined. So go ahead and select the cell that has the first string and then press comma. Now you're going to select a second string, but do be aware that if you are selecting another cell and there are no spaces in that cell, these two strings will be merged together into a single word with no space in between. If you do want to have a space, you'll actually have to add in a blank space. Now the way you can do that is by simply opening up quotation marks and then pressing space and closing those quotation marks. You now comma again, and this is where you select your second string. As you can see in our function, we now have three strings. We have our first cell, a blank space, and then a third, which is our second cell. These are going to be merged together. And let's just have a look at the results. We're going to close our brackets and then press enter. As you can see, concatenate takes these strings and they will be merged together. Now the same thing can be done with join. So let's go ahead and open up a join function. We're going to press equals join. Now the difference in this function is that the first thing you have to type is the actual character that you'd like to use in between words. So we're going to use a space. So go ahead and open up your quotation marks, space, close quotation marks. Now you're going to comma and now we're going to select the range of strings that we'd like to see merged. Now it is going to use the character mentioned at the beginning of our function and it's going to put that in between every single other cell. So let's have a look at the results. We're going to close our brackets and press enter. All my cells have been merged into a single sentence and in between the words we've used that character. So let's just quickly change the character and see what happens. We're going to add a dash in between the words 
And by simply changing our function, you can now see that my sentence looks very different. This is how join works. And then the text join, again, starts off with that character you'd like to use in between the words. But there is a second statement that you need to do, and this is a Boolean statement. It's a true or false. And the true or false is asking you, what do you want to do with empty cells. Do you want to skip them or not? So we're going to go with true, we're going to skip empty cells and then the next one after our comma is going to be our range. So let's go ahead and select a range, close the brackets and let's see what happens now. Again we have the same results with that difference that empty cells will be skipped. And this was my number three and that brings us to the fourth function and that's count. Now count is going to count up how many numeric values can be found in a range. So let's say that you have a number of scores, you can use the count to find out exactly how many scores have been entered. This is great when you're checking to make sure that everything is in order, that everyone has replied, or a quick way of quickly counting how many values have been submitted. A count works by simply typing equals count, open up your brackets and then select the range. We're going to close the brackets and press enter. As you can see in this column I have a number of values, however in the other column I have no values. There are no numeric values, only text and strings, so it returns a zero. Which brings us to the next one and that's count A as in count all. So let's see what it does when I use a count A. Now count A takes in all values, not just numeric values. It is actually going to check the entire range and if there is a text in your cell, that's going to count as one value. If there's a number, that's another value and it adds it up that way. So count for numbers, count A for all values. Which brings us to the next count and this is by number six and number six is count if. Now count if, just like sum if, is going to count up the values but only if they meet a criteria. So we're first going to add our range, comma, and then we add the criteria. So let's go ahead with the greater than 10 and then we're going to close our brackets and enter. So here we have the total count for a certain criteria. This is great to evaluate how well students have understood a certain concept or when you're using tests and you're grading scores, this allows you to see who has achieved a certain minimum on these tests. And talking about scores, this brings us neatly to the seventh function and this is average. Now average is going to give us the average score when a range of numeric values has been selected. So let's say that you have a number of test results and you'd like to find out what the class average is. Simply type equals average, open up your brackets, select your range by clicking, dragging and dropping and then we're going to close the brackets and this gives us an average score. Now working with date and time is not always as easy as you might expect it to be in Google Sheets and this brings us to the next function, working with dates and especially the today function. So let's just go ahead and type in equals today, close our brackets and enter. What this does is it automatically gives you an updated today date that you can then use in your spreadsheets. This is great when you're trying to find out how long ago Ago something has taken place because then you can use this today function to subtract it from a previous date. This way you can find out the difference between today and let's say a test that took place a while ago. Now what is important to note is when you are working with dates please do use the functions. So after today's function we're going to move on to the date function. So let's say that you're talking about the 1st of January 2019, well let's use that function in order for us to put that date in there. We're going to press equals, then date, open up our bracket. Now the first thing it's asking is year, comma, month, comma, day. Now why do we have to use a date function? Well this is because this way Google Sheets knows 100% of the time that you are talking about a date. It also knows what the month is and you can never get the format wrong. It also allows you to now have interactions between these two cells. So we have a today and a date. We can now subtract these from each other and find out how many days difference between these two dates. Let's have a look at that right now. We're going to press equals and I'm going to type date 2019 first of the first and I'm going to subtract that from today and close that. 
Now, because it is set as a function, the later in time we open up the spreadsheet, the higher the number or the difference in days will be. Which brings us to the 10th function, and this is the VLOOKUP or vertical lookup. Now the way vertical lookup works is you simply start by typing equals VLOOKUP and then open up the brackets. The first part of your function is going to be what you're searching for. So in my example, I'm going to search for the name Mike. I'm going to put this in between I'm going to put this in between speech marks because it is a string. Then I'm going to press comma. Next, you're going to select the range. So where would you like to look? Now remember, VLOOKUP looks in the vertical first column. So if we're going to find Mike, we need to make sure that Mike is in there and we're going to select our range. Next, it is asking for an index. Now this index is going to tell us which value do you want me to return? And this is going to be the following columns. So you need to look at it as the first column being the index one. And then as we count, we have index two, three, four. I would like to see the results of the second column return to me. So I'm going to press number two. Then I'm going to close the brackets and simply enter. As you can see, the correct value is returned to me and I can instantly look up a specific value. Great for when you're dealing with prizes, again, results from tests or summative assessments. This is very, very helpful, especially when it comes to interpreting all that data that you've collected on your students. Which brings us to the 11th function. And this is a function that is often mentioned during boot camps and when you're preparing to take the educator exam and it's the spark line. Many Many of us have never heard of it before until we've actually studied for the educator exam. And the spark line is going to give you a mini chart inside a cell. So let's go ahead and type in equals spark line and then simply select the range of values we'd like to see reflected in this spark line. I'm going to close our brackets and now again we get a mini chart linked to our cell and we can easily move it around. Number 12, my all time favorite and I should have really put this on number one, but Google Translate. Yes, you can use Google Translate in your cells. Let's have a look at how this works. We have a column here in one language and let's say that this is in English and I want to translate a cell automatically into Spanish. No problem, we can use Google Translate. Now the way Google Translate works is it's going to take a string from one cell, translate it into a second language and then return that string to a cell. Now you can use this for as many languages as you like and you can even have it work automatically on multiple cells at the same time. Now I will leave a link in the cards at the top and this is where I'm actually using this and then linking it with Autocrat to automatically generate flashcards that you can then use in multiple languages in your classrooms. But let's look at the basic functionality of Google Translate. We're going to press equals Google Translate. The first perimeter is going to be our original text. So let's go ahead and select the cell with the original text. So now that we have our text, we're going to press comma. And then the second perimeter is going to be the source language. And yes, you've guessed it right, we can use the language codes. So let's go ahead and put EN for English. Once you've done that, another comma, and this brings us to the target language. Now the target language is again using these language codes, and for Spanish, we're going to use ES as in Espanol. Our function is complete. We can now close the brackets and see the magic happen. Google Translate is working in the background and it automatically translates this word. Now again, as I mentioned, you can have this work automatically for rows and columns by simply dragging this little corner bit down or sideways and is then going to adjust the formula. Now before moving on to the 13th, do scroll down and go to that comment section. Let me know which one has been your favorite so far, which functions are you hoping to see next and have I missed anything? Let me know and then scroll back up to watch the rest of this video because this brings us to number 13 and this is the character function. Now using the character function, we can pull in bullet points and these all come from Unicode. So I'll leave a link in that description to the Unicode overview. But for now, let's just stick to the bullet points and this is the 8226. So we're going to put in character, open up your brackets, 8226 and close them. You'll see as soon as I press enter, what do we get? We get a bullet point. Now, if we want to have text behind that, no problem, we simply add to our function. We're going to add a ampersand or an and symbol. We can now open up our speech marks 
Let's start off with a space and then the word we would like to see bullet pointed. Then we can close our speech marks. Let's go ahead and enter again and you will now see that your word is behind that bullet point in a single cell. Do note that you cannot interpret this as a string anymore because now it is part of a function. In order for you to work with these words elsewhere in your document, I would recommend having them in one column and then having a bullet pointed list in another column and simply hiding the first column. The way you would do that is by using character 8226, close it, ampersand, open up speech marks, space, close speech marks, ampersand again, and then selecting the cell that contains the word. Once you press enter, you will now get that word from that other column. You're going to pull it in and you're going to add a bullet point in front of it. Very useful in some cases, not necessarily in the daily classroom use of Google Sheets. However, what is very useful in the classroom is our 14th function everyone should know about and that is unique. And what unique does is it looks at your range and it's going to return all the unique values discarding any duplicates. So let's go ahead and test it out. We're going to press equals unique open up our brackets and select our range. Now, as you can see, I have a number of doubles here. I'm going to close the range, enter, and only the unique values are returned to me. Very useful indeed. And that brings us to the final one, 15 functions you should know in Google Sheets. And this is number 15, random. Now, randomizing is something that we love to do in classrooms. We either pick a random name or we get a random number. Now the one I like to use is the random between. Now the way this works is the same as with all other functions, start off with equals and then we're going to type in R-A-N-D between. Within our brackets we give it two values, the low and high value. And then what does it return? A random number between these two. So let's say between 10 and 20. So the low number will be 10 comma 20 and we're going to press enter. Once we've done that, we get a random value between 10 and 20. These numbers can be anything you'd like it to be. And that is the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful. Do scroll down to that comment section and let me know which function do you use most often and why. Also, which functions have I missed out and are there any functions that you like to use in the classroom that I've completely missed? I'd love to hear your feedback in that comment section. Don't forget to share this out and in the meantime, we have other videos on the channel as well. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.